Central Association. I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, this is the first year where we actually changed the, the forum a little bit in that we actually have co-sponsors this year. Um, I believe, what's the name? The Truman? Tammy. Truman Street Collaborative? What are we doing? Yeah, Truman Street Collaborative. Truman Street Collaborative. What we've basically done, we've also invited our neighbors to the Korean American Center across the street from us. Uh, New Horizon, which is the school, uh, New Horizon of Irvine, which is the school next to us, as well as the Islamic Center of, of Irvine to also participate with us in this particular event. So we were hoping that we would broaden um, the conversation uh, that we're going to have here today. So we appreciate you all for being here today. Before I introduce our moderator, I do want to introduce uh, an individual that will speak to a couple of issues related to this particular panel. This is for the school board round. We'll be here and then we'll be doing mayor and city council later. Um, but I did want to introduce Ira Glasky because we've had a change in how the elections are done for the school board. They are now by trustee area. And so the way things work out is in this election cycle, there were two areas that were open for election. The one that you'll be hearing from is area two with the candidates we have on the dais. Um, Mr. Glasky is in area four, if I'm correct. Uh, there was no one who pulled papers to run uh, in that particular race, and as a result, uh, Ira is basically going to be re-elected. So, he's going to be serving in that I did want to have him come up for a couple minutes and just kind of explain to us uh, this new system and how it works, and if you can tell us a little bit about you know, Area 4 or whatever he wants to talk about. Perfect. Cyril, thank you very much, and thank you for all the organizations involved for hosting this event. Uh, these kind of forums are so important in what we do and what we learn. Um, with the uh, really acrimonious national debate, it's so important on the local level to have an opportunity to talk to candidates and talk about the issues, because these are the folks that really affect our day-to-day -day lives here in Irvine. Um, I am uh, finishing my first four-year term on the school board, uh, and as Cyril said, we've had some changes on our, our school board in terms of how things are going to be elected. Uh, the California Voting Rights Act uh, is different than the Federal Voting Rights Act and makes vulnerable all at-large districts. So that our large districts are where you vote for all the candidates across the entire city. Uh, and so um, earlier in the spring, uh, some of the issues were raised in terms of the at-large district. We went through a very complicated, excuse me, complex and involved process uh, to evaluate whether or not the Urban Unified School District should change to trustee area elections, which is really what's uh, encouraged by the California Voting Rights Act. Over 20 districts in Orange County have already either made the switch to trustee area elections or are in the process of. And what that means is you basically divide the city up in kind of equal numbers for the most part based on the 2010 census. We'll redo it again in a couple years. Uh, and so we divided with five board members, divided the city up into essentially five areas. Each one has approximately 20% of the residents. And only the residents who live in that specific district can vote for the candidates that are running in that district. Uh, so with five districts, the way that it came up was that there were two districts that were up for election this year, District 2 and District 4. District 2, which generally has the areas that are South Woodbridge, uh, West Park, Culverdale area, University Park for the most part. Uh, District 4, which was most of the area kind of north of the 5 freeway, kind of the side, uh, with the exception of the areas around Briarwood and with the exception of the Great Park neighborhoods, uh, which are in two other areas. Um, and so, um, because no one filed against me, as Cyril said, there will be an election for trustee area four, so it will not be on your ballot. Um, and I'll just be seated in December when the when the winner of trustee area two will be seated as well. Um, people have asked how to determine the districts and how did that come about? How did the areas come about? Uh, and so we went through a process. We had uh, six public hearings. We had a number, a handful of community meetings. We hired a demographer created a series of options and maps. Um, and based on criteria that's in the California Voting Rights Act, as well as additional criteria that the board put forth. And that primarily was the fact that while you're voting just for the trustee in your trustee area, they represent the entire city, all the residents, all the students, all the families of the entire city. And so when we drew maps, we wanted to make sure that they had multiple attendance areas. So for instance, each of the board members, each of the trustee areas, covers more than one high school attendance boundaries. Because we really felt it was so strongly that we didn't want one area city pitted, pitted against another area city. Because we were elected to represent all the students, uh, all of our staff members, all of our teachers, 
Uh, and so we want to make sure that we cover large general areas. And so while you'll vote this year for trustee area two, in two years from now, you'll see trustees areas one, three, and five. And so there'll be three races that uh, will be before you. Of course, once again, only if you live in that trustee area will be able to vote for that, that member. So we're excited about the change. Uh, we think it will encourage a lot of participation, a lot of discussion. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. So we're excited about it. Please take the time to learn about the candidates today, both for this race as well as the others. Uh, and as always, as school board members, we're always be able to answer any questions you may have regarding schools and all of our contact information is up on the website, iusd.org. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ira. And so we're going to move on to our forum. I do want to introduce our moderator. Um, she is over here to my right, Shu Ping Yin. Uh, she is a longtime supporter of the South Coast Chinese uh, Cultural Association. She's been a PTA president, PTO president in the past. Uh, her kids went through the school when we were actually building this facility. And she's actually um, been a moderator for this particular event multiple times. Um, she's been a, a great volunteer for us. One of the things we try to do is we try to keep people that are involved in this particular process as people who don't live in Irvine. So she actually lives in Costa Mesa. The two people that will be assisting her that are screening questions are going to be John Lim and Lisa Smith. They also, neither of them live in Irvine, but have been great contributors to our community and we really appreciate their help today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our moderator. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, Ken. So please uh, take a few seconds to silence your cell phone if you have them on. So for the candidates, you will have two minutes for an opening in a two minutes for a closing statement and 60 seconds to answer questions. And we have a timer, camera over there, uh, 30 second timer and 10, ten seconds. All right? When you see the 10 second, you need to wrap up and uh, time out, we will uh, move on to the next candidate. All right, so instruction for the audience. Treat your candidate fairly. Please remain quiet throughout the forum. No clapping, sharing, or calling out. With the exception that uh, after their closing statement, you may clap for all the candidates. There, there will be no camping literature inside the room. It's all outside if you wanted to uh, display them. You are encouraged to submit questions, and we have uh, Tammy and Beatrice with uh, notes, papers, and pen, and submit your question. And uh, question will be screened, and duplicate question will be uh, combined. All right. Now I uh, will turn the floor back to the candidate. Since there are just two of you, and we, uh, you alternate, so uh, why don't you, it looks like you're ready. Uh, Sharon, please go ahead. Okay, can everybody hear me? Good morning. Thank you, Good morning. So, thank you so much to, once again, the South Coast Chinese Cultural Center for hosting this and for the sponsors. We truly appreciate everything you do for our community. I think most of you know me, so I don't need to go through a whole resume of what I've done. It's out there on a piece of paper. But what I do want to tell you is that I'm the only candidate that, have been, that has been endorsed by our Teachers Association and our classified employees. The reason why is because to do this job, you have to have a lot of knowledge. You have to do your homework. You have to pay attention. Every single plan, but well, they're not all here. Whether it's our tech plan, or our facilities plan, or our safety plan, I understand them. 
cover to cover. And it's that experience that becomes so valuable. I do want to tell you briefly a little bit about my beliefs. I do have beliefs, aside from and in addition to our district's core values. I believe, and I want you to listen to this, I believe each student can learn to a high level. That's a very powerful statement. I believe that we need to teach our child in a number of ways, academically, physically, and about their well-being. I believe teachers are the most important person in that classroom. Most importantly, I believe that our kids pass this way once. I hope you hear my passion. I look forward to talking to you. Sacramento higher. We can't do the same thing that other districts do. 
or other states do when you're the lowest funded. I think that's a real challenge. Yes, we do have growth through our school, and I have to tell you, thank goodness we have additional students, because with those additional students, we are able to hire newly trained, energetic teachers that are so valuable. Thank you. The camera, uh, one, one minute answer, okay? Only one minute, not two minutes. Next question. What is one unique qualification that makes you an ideal candidate for the school board? Well, I think every candidate for school board should have this. I have a passion and I have a purpose in what I do. I care about these students day in and day out. I have had experience at the local level, the county level, the state level as a delegate to the California School Boards Association and at the national level. So my experience is unparalleled. I do my homework and I enjoy what I do. Thank you. Could you repeat the question, please? What is uh, one unique qualification that makes you an ideal candidate for the school board? Experience and commitment to public education. I see public education as the backbone of democracy. And I feel that we need to give it every bit of our energy and, and passion. Most of us moved to Irvine due to the high quality of life, safe environment, and most importantly, excellent education and school system. What is your plan to maintain and improve the educational excellence in Irvine, given the financial constraint faced by the district? Well, I don't have 16 years of experience within the school board, as does my, um, my friend Sharon, but I do have a strong, strong, strong commitment to fine-tuning the fine work that's already going on. There, are, there is nothing to criticize about the work of this district or the Board of Education, but there is always an opportunity to improve, to stay abreast of new advances, to stay abreast of new trends, and, and, and that's it. Uh, 30 seconds, and you can go on for another, you know. Uh, There's a one minute answer, so if you see 30 seconds, you can continue, but when you see 10 seconds, you, that's time to wrap up, okay? I, th I think the essence of my thought was already stated. Okay, good. All right. uh, Sharon, please. Well, I think that we are always continuing to improve. That's the reason why we have a continuous improvement plan. Not one of the binders down there, because it's way too big. <laughs> In that plan, it talks about what is necessary for, for us to do what's in the best interest of our students. That is to instill the joy of learning. That is to allow risk-taking, to understand that students can make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. We can improve in every way. This is a continuous improvement effort on the part of the school district, and it's spelled out very carefully in our local control accountability plan. Thank you. All right, we have uh, a question from uh, the audience. So uh, audience, if you have a question, please raise your hand and Tammy and Beatrice will uh, hand you a card and a pen, and uh, then we can ask uh, Tammy a question. All right, here's the uh, candidate's um, question from audience. Where do you stand on charter school? Where do you stand on charter school? I'm opposed to charter schools. I believe that we need to use every possible penny of funding to fund our public schools. 
And even though some charter schools consider themselves quasi-public schools, I don't think we should be diverting any funds <coughs> to charter schools. Well, we do not have charter schools in Irvine Unified School District. The purpose of a charter school is to give something to the student that they don't already have. And in some instances, that does make sense. I will say it does make sense. The problem with charter schools and the way the legislation is right now is that the same money that is funding the school district is also going to fund the charter schools. But they do not have to obey by the same rules and regulations as regular school districts. And that becomes a problem. And that's the reason why there's been so much legislation and actual legislation that has been passed that will be enacted this year to say that school boards should have more discretion over whether they allow a charter or they do not. All right, uh, next question. What actions would you take to help new immigrant students and parents settle in our school district? Oh, such an important question. We just talked about this as one of our goals. We have a city that looks like a mosaic, and it's beautiful, and it's wonderful. At the school district currently, of course, we have English language immersion. We expect our students to be proficient within a few years, but this is what we really want. We want the parent community to be part of the schools. We want to be able to have parent volunteers from every race, from every country, from everywhere, come into the classroom and volunteer. We want this to be a community, an entire community, that supports our public education. Thank you. Oh, that's hard. a hard answer to be, I would agree. We have to have 